Good morning in the morning, everybody. So with next week coming Punica Power Pass plus the Express event to item level 1370. It is a good time to talk about War Dancer because a lot of my friends started playing War Dancer or I know, I know generally a lot of people starting to play War Dancer then quitting it because it's they lack damage or they don't really understand what it takes to be a War Dancer. So we are going to make a quick video about it. We're going to cover basic rotation and what to look for if you want to play a War Dancer. It doesn't matter if you play Esoteric or if you play First Intention. We are only going to cover the tripods of the three main skills. Because War Dancer in itself is a class that has really a lot of choices when it comes to skills. After this we are going to show a quick rotation sample and then I'm going to include a Egrexion gameplay of Esoteric War Dancer at the end. So you have something you can look for and I will commentate it. Alright, so let's get straight into it. So these are your main skills. Wind's Whisper, Roar of Courage and Energy Combustion. Wind's Whisper, you can take Blessing of the Wind if you are Esoteric, otherwise you are probably going to take Protection of the Wind if you are First Intention, or you can take Oath of the Wind as First Intention if you lack mana problems. If you have a Conviction Judgment Rune, this shouldn't be really be a problem, but just to mention, you can take this. Now, second tripod is basically always Quick Pep because you want to have this up as much as possible because it's this skill is your burst window. You basically don't do that much damage outside of the skill. So you always want to activate it, burst it, burst, and then wait until it's up again. Obviously, here we're going to take the ready attack for the big attack attack buff for six seconds. Now, Roar of Courage, if you are Esoteric War Dancer, you are going to take the Bubble Gainer. Otherwise, you can take Magic Control or White Hit if you think you are not going to hit the boss. <laughs> Quick prep is a must. You just want to scale up permanently because the last trade pot, Fatal Wave, makes the foe's crit resistance minus 10%. Your party's energy, your party will thank you if you can keep this up a lot. Now, basically, just imagine I have the other slots filled out with any skills, depends uh, if you want esoteric skills, imagine two esoteric skills, or imagine first intention skills, it doesn't really matter. So, let's talk about first intention first, because it's easier. Popping energy combustion, and then you just pop your other synergy skills, you do your combo and with your most damaging skills until your buffs run out. And then you wait. Now, energy combustion on the last tick does a lot of damage for this tripod here. Now you take this one for first intention, the armor. I would basically always take intense battle. You can take skill reduction if you find yourself um, lacking gems or not being able to do the rotation properly and you take Lost Whisper, basically it stores damage. Every tick stores damage, and at the end it releases the damage that you have stored, right? So, we're storing damage, we're doing damage, we're always doing punches, doing skills, whatever, just doing everything it takes to beat the boss up, and now it glows red, and the stored damage explodes. So why is it so important? You pop this, 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 and you do your combo, right? You do your skills, you run around, you're chasing the boss if he jumps away, all that good chess. Meanwhile, your energy combustion pops and pops and pops. Now, if you have less cooldown, you could start the combo again, but it needs to pop. Like this. So what I'm trying to tell you, you do your combo, and then, the moment energy combustion is short before exploding, and you can see this here, right? And you see it glowing. You're popping 
the Rear of Courage and the Wind's Whisper again, so you gain more damage out of the Wind's, uh, out of the Energy Combustion. Right. I'm showing you an example with skills. So this is my Esoteric setup. I have this here, then I have Flash Moon Kick. I have the Sky Shattering Blow and I have the, the skills right here. Okay, so keep in mind that for Esoteric you also have to keep a look on your bubbles. You always want to use your Esoteric skills if you have full bubbles, otherwise it doesn't really do much. All because of the Esoteric Rune, which is this one. Maximum numbers of Esoteric Orbs, plus one, so you gain four Orbs instead of three. And 10% more damage, now on level two, per Esoteric Orb you have. So, one, two, three, four, 40% more damage on these skills if I have all Orbs. Now, starting the fight, popping Energy Combustion if I have this stuff up already going in, bam, bam. Popping this real quick because it gives an attack buff as well. Filling up the bubbles. Popping the second esoteric skill and now I'm waiting. Basically just building up meter again for esoteric. First intention is a bit different now. Popping it again. So I get the tick from the energy combustion. Repeating the stuff again. Bam. Combo. It builds. Filling up meter again. And now I have the downtime for energy combustion until it ticks again because I fucked up the rotation a bit. But it doesn't matter. Popping it again. You get the idea. And now, popping the energy combustion, the last tick, with Roar of Courage buff and the Wind's Whisper buff for maximum damage. I see a lot of people wasting the last tick of energy combustion and it's really sad because they are losing a lot of damage from it. Now this is a quick example of first intention ward answer, but it's basically the same. You go, you pop your stuff, and then you pop your most damaging skills while you have the buff activated. Then you chill again, right? You're just doing your thing, waiting for the energy combustion to come up here. Staying at the boss so you gain, start picking the stuff up. Now go before red, popping your buff, getting your most damaging skills out, and that's it. That's it. Now, if you have mana problems, but you have a Conviction Judgment rune, War Dancer is super good for popping Conviction Judgment. I recommend you put Conviction on Flash Heat Fang, or if you want to run it on Sleeping Essence Celebration. So you pop that, and then you put Judgment on Energy Combustion, because what else you want to put on it, right? And also, every tick right here, Every tick can put uh, the judgment, right? So you get conviction, you just chill, and judgment from the pops. Every damage pop can pop judgment. So that's super good. And if you pop this frequently, you are basically not running out of mana that fast. Doesn't matter if you are esoteric or first intention, this is a really good trick. Now the other thing is, you can cancel your auto attacks as war dance, right? Like this. You basically just left click, right click. Like this. Well, you know, like this. Left click, click behind, right click. Like, just like this. And you basically attack faster than other classes. So, for example, uh, the Wild Town Freeze Make or something. If you need to break something free or someone free, you can use this. Or if you just want to gain more bubbles or just attack faster in general, you use this to get more auto attacks out. Now this part you can skip it if you don't, are not interested in the gameplay aspect of Esoteric. But maybe it helps some people to understand the rotation better. So I will just keep explaining as we go. And maybe you can get one or two tricks, so... Popping this, 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 and then we ulting, because there's no other real spot to ult at the beginning. Just filling up our meter, because the boss specific, the Egrexion, goes into turtle mode. And then you don't really deal a lot of damage. 
So it's just filling up, waiting for him to go turtle mode. You lack a bit damage right here, but it doesn't matter. Now, now he's in turtle mode, you walk out because you don't want to get hit by the explosion. Pop energy combustion, walk on, get behind him because you're a back attack class. Now you're getting your combo out. Unlucky if he jumps away, but that, that's okay. Getting your combo out. Now it's a bit asynchro, so we're waiting a little to fix the combo. Energy combustion. Getting behind him. Now we get a perfect combo out. Filling up meter again as we go. To release the blasting formation on full meter. Now we're chilling. So erection is a bit harder. For esoteric war dancer. Because the energy combustion pick is really hard to hit when he goes into turtle mode. Like the, the the timings when he goes into turtle mode are basically random. Like you can't really predict it because he has no life bar or something. Or whatever. Now we wait energy combustion before it goes red. Filling up meter again. Getting out of it because we don't want to get knocked up. Dust formation. Fading up meter again, waiting for the skills. As you can see, sometimes I'm not really using all bubbles to pop it, but in the best case, I would. Now, popping my shit again. Now see, I pop my shit and now he goes into turtle mode, so... Yeah, that's a bit, you know... Can happen, can happen. Now another thing that you can do... If you are in front of the boss... With Esoteric Blast Formation... You can go like this... Oh. And the sticks right here... They will still count as back attack most of the time. And now I died because I didn't pay attention. Fuck me. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Not the best look for the video, but you know. Happens if you if you talk and try to explain things and taking worse positions. But I hope you get the idea. And I even fucked up the pheromone. Quick cut. We back again. So you see me using this one right here, the sky blow. It's because of the second tripod that gives me a quick uh, attack buff as well. So if I'm using this, I'm getting an attack, attack buff, right? So my skills hit even harder. This, this, this. Now ult again. With the attack buff from the sky blow, filling up meter. Now burst time, bam bam, and I died again. It's getting embarrassing, but apparently I can't talk and play at the same time. Whatever. Now you can see, War Dancer is for sure not an easy class to play. It requires a lot of thinking, it requires a lot of timings for your skill. And that's why a lot of people quit War Dancer. They just don't enjoy having these tight damage windows. Okay, even if this run was a big fail, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from how to play War Dancer. Um, and if you keep that all in mind while creating one or getting better at the class, you still deal a shit ton of damage. If you keep all this in mind. If you really focus around these three skills, you deal a shit ton of damage. But you have to get used to it first and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. I'm out.